Hello, I'm Dustin Kirkland, Product Manager at Google, here at KubeCon Copenhagen, and I'm joined by one of my colleagues, Dan Cerulli, Product Manager for Istio. Dan, every single session about Istio here is packed, people falling out of the room. Why is there so much excitement about the Istio project? Well, I think that the, the people who have been adopting Kubernetes and, and now you know, four years in, we've got a bunch of people who are using it, have realized that when you're deploying lots of things in lots of containers, there's lots of communication between those containers and traffic into those containers. And Istio uh, helps them with that traffic. When you've got all that traffic, you need to monitor it, see what's going on in your application. You need to control it, where the, all the requests are going, and of course you need to secure it. And, and people realize as they adopted Kubernetes that there wasn't anything in the ecosystem that did all of those things for them. So Istio, they see as, as this, what will be the solution for all those problems. Ah, that's great. So people talk about day zero problems of standing up a Kubernetes, and we help with that with GKE. People talk about day one, day two problems, getting those upgraded. What you're talking about is really a step beyond that. Now you've got a Kubernetes, how do you keep the interesting workloads working on top of Kubernetes? Yeah, it really, it, it's giving a bunch of the tools that are similar to what our SREs have uh, in operating services at Google. One of our first, in fact, the first customer to go into production on Istio was Descartes Labs. They, they run it uh, GKE, and they, they loved the move to microservices, but they found that after they had adopted it, when things slowed down and when their app wasn't running well, they had no idea why and they had multiple dependencies between their services and no real way to, to figure out what those were or which ones were causing the problems. So they were an early adopter of Istio and they instantly had a, a service graph to tell them where their dependencies were, but most importantly, they had the golden uh, metrics. They, they could see what was going on. They could see where the high traffic was, where the latencies were, so they could solve the problems. So Istio must touch a lot of different layers in Kubernetes, certainly networking, security, maybe storage. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about how Istio interacts with the rest of Kubernetes? Well, we're, we're ultimately it's, it's built on top of Kubernetes. We run our services in Kubernetes. We're dependent on the, in the API server. And really the Kubernetes API server is, is everything that's building on top of Kubernetes is, is uh, you know, using the API server. Um, we are replacing or offering an alternative as an ingress, uh, Istio ingress, you know, featuring the Envoy proxy, which is a really, really fast, very powerful proxy uh, that a lot of people are using. Um, and yeah, we're, we're building on top of that, that great Kubernetes ecosystem. It's all about the APIs then. I mean, having good, clean, well-defined APIs and adhering to those, to those APIs. Yeah, and, and what's interesting about that is that Istio itself uh, helps to govern those APIs. So I think these two projects are going to go together really, really well. And where do you see Istio going next as we look out to the next six months or so? Can you give us a hint? Well, we're, you know, we're, we're at version 0.7 right now. Uh, we are fast approaching, we hope, 1.0. We've got about 10 uh, companies that we know of in production today. And so the, the code is getting there. We've got stability in our APIs. So we're getting ready to declare 1.0. And when we do that, I think we're going to see a wave of adoption. Um, and that's going to be really exciting. We'll see the ecosystem start to build. We've got a lot of partners who are building integrations right now. So I see you know, us going from very early adopters to more mainstream adoption and uh, a big ecosystem building around it. And like, what's the, what's the last hard problems to solve before getting to that proverbial 1.0? Can you give us a, a sense of like, what's the big thorny issues on your mind? Uh, performance is an issue. We need to make sure that, that people understand exactly you know, how much latency will this add, how much uh, more compute is it going to add. Um, we've got the APIs pretty stable right now. We need to make sure it is uh, stable at scale. Although we do have, uh, you know, weather.com is running it at about 400,000 requests a second. Uh, so we're already getting into, into pretty good uh, production stability there. I was going to ask you about scale, actually. You, you, you jumped one step ahead of me here. <laughs> uh, but 400,000 containers, or sorry, 400,000 requests per second is, is, is outstanding. Does Istio, help, uh, does Istio help stave off some of, those, some of the work that someone might have to do otherwise without a service mesh in place to, to help with that sort of scalability of, of traffic? What it does to your, to your scalability of traffic, it allows you to understand your system better. Uh, today, too many people are scaling pods on things like memory consumption or CPU, when in reality, what you might want to scale on is the amount of traffic that you're getting or what your latencies are doing. And so it's actually giving better tools to your operators to, uh, to be able to run those systems better. Gotcha. So earlier today, we've uh, we've just heard about the Stackdriver announcements. Can you tell us about how Istio and Stackdriver might interact? 
Well, we already have in open source a, a mixer plugin. Mixer is one of the components of Istio that gathers telemetry. Uh, a, a plugin today that, that will send all of your Istio telemetry to Stackdriver. Uh, we've got some really interesting things in the works with that team uh, right now, some stuff that we can't talk about, but uh, you know, they, they announced this Kubernetes thing. We're already working on, on the next big thing with those guys. Okay, last question. Security is on everyone's mind. How does Istio help improve the security model, the policy model around Kubernetes itself? It gives uh, everyone a, a standard way and an easy way, first of all, easy way to get MTLS on every call. You know, we believe in a defense in depth strategy and even if your perimeter is secure, you should be securing every single call. So MTLS lets you uh, identify every single call that gets made and that in turn lets you put an authorization policy on it. So it allows uh, everyone in the world to do what we do at Google, which is every single call is strongly authenticated and authorized. Uh, it, it, as I said, it's a def defense in depth strategy that can't be beat. That's really well thought out. Thanks, Dan. Right. Appreciate your time.